My name is Jem Vanzel and I'm a professor in a business school at the University of Cumbria and I'm the founder director of the Institute for Leadership and Sustainability. So I was presenting here at the conference about a case study of something called the Bangla Pesa, which is a complementary currency that's working in an informal settlement or, or a slum uh, outside Mombasa in Kenya. The findings are with, with the Bangla Pesa uh, since its launch uh, that it's increased trade amongst the people that are using it. Uh, so this was a study done of uh, about 40 sole traders, so really small entrepreneurs, poor entrepreneurs in this slum. It's increased their trade just in its first week by about 22%. And this is not displacing the, the trade in the national currency, the shilling, but actually entirely additional trade. And this is what we expected because uh, in many poor communities there's a lack of a means of exchange. So national currency me merely a means of exchange. So it means that there's underused capacity. So what we've found is that if it's just one trader issuing a, a voucher with a promise to pay, then that, that won't really circulate as a currency. But if you get together many companies, so in this case, in the Bangla Pesa, 200 companies agreeing to back each other's promise. So what they did is they all got 200 Bangla Pesa to spend. Uh, and these, these will all be redeemed by the 200 uh, companies that participate. And so within the first week, this circulated as a new means of exchange and increased trade amongst these uh, small traders, uh, small enterprises. With the Bangla Pesa, the problem was that uh, there was a, a nasty article in the local press uh, within two weeks of its launch, and this led to a police raid. Uh, they decided that this might be uh, some kind of um, politically motivated project, some separatist uh, uh, initiative. Uh, they ransacked the houses of the founders. When they couldn't pin terrorism on them, uh, they then went to the central bank and managed to get the central bank to put forward a charge of forgery. So this has been highly disruptive and extremely stressful for the people who, uh, the community leaders who created this project. It's also put them on the front pages. Uh, they've really helped raise awareness around, around Kenya and, in, and also around the world about how there's such a lack of understanding of, of, of this whole field of community and complementary currencies. Uh, so it, it's raised the question of how we as an emerging profession working in this, experts in this, uh, work together to better provide support to NGOs, to local governments, to national governments, to central banks, to development agencies about the valid role for complementary currencies as a development tool. Uh, also, it raises many issues of, I mean, the, these, these colleagues of ours are facing seven years in jail if they lose the case. Now, clearly they weren't forging national currency. These Bangla Pesa say very clearly that they are vouchers for the network and they can only be redeemed at the participating businesses. This was all made extremely clearly in the development process, and it's a, it's a locally well-governed initiative. Uh, so hopefully this case will be dropped, or if it goes to trial, then uh, the, the Bangla Pesa founders will win, um, as what happened in Brazil with the Banco Palmas a few years ago. And in that case, the central bank decided to support the initiative and, and roll it out then across the country in Brazil. So this could be a very important mo moment in complementary currencies in East Africa, but we'll have to wait and see.